Growing sunchokes in recent years has become a lot more popular in backyards and on homesteads because the plant is easy to grow, it propagates easily, and it produces a lot of food. However, what most people don't know is that this plant can be highly susceptible to a major disease. So the sunchoke is a perennial plant, it's native to North America, it grows fairly easily in most soils, and it's fairly resistant to a lot of diseases. But there is one prominent exception, and that exception is Sclerotinia sclerotiorum. Commonly, this disease is called white mold, and it can also affect uh, green beans, sunflowers, some brassicas, and other related plants. In fact, probably for many gardeners who grow green beans, when those plants are producing those green beans, some of those beans sometimes develop like a bushy white beard, um, and that's also that, uh, that white mold taking effect. Some symptomatic characteristics shared among these different plant species that I already mentioned, uh, maybe like wilting of stems or plants, uh, they may develop like black little like sclerotia or like little like pebble like looking structures inside the stem. There may also be a white mold uh, type look near the base of the plant. So like where the stem is coming out of the ground, uh, that's one key place to look. And then also like, especially in the case of sunchokes, you, when you're digging up the tubers, especially like in the fall or winter, uh, you can see the surrounding soil is just covered in like this white mossy um, looking mold. Uh, and also the tubers can be covered in that too. So some possible causes uh, for this white mold taking over in some of these plants, such as the sunchoke, right? It's probably going to be uh, a specific change in the environment, right? If it gets cold and damp, right? It might be more conducive to developing that disease. Or if plants are too closely crowded and have too much of like a thick canopy, like what my sunchoke patch looked like a couple of seasons ago, right? Because I didn't get around to thinning them out, so the, all these plants grew up in this area and there, was, and there was really poor air circulation. And then also like sometimes not rotating your crops. So it might be a good practice to grow sunchokes maybe in the same spot for um, you know, every two to three years and then switching it up, allowing other plants to go in that area after that for a few years because different types of plants will harbor different communities of microbes. So it can help to like change that soil microbiome and bring back a state of balance. But I also wonder if the whole idea of crop rotation in this specific instance is not quite digging deep enough into the problem, right? My question would be, you know, what specific factors may have caused that specific fungus, that mold, to really thrive in that area, right? What changed in the soil chemistry or the soil microbiome to make it easy for that microbe to just take over? Are there certain nutrient deficiencies? Um, was it plant stress from the year before when I didn't thin them out? and then the plants got stressed and then they sent different types of compounds into the soil that may have skewed a balance and now that area is trying to balance itself out right because that area didn't get thinned out so it was beyond the carrying capacity of the sun chokes in that uh, per square foot in that area. Also, one th interesting thing I noticed too is that plants that were infected with this white mold tended to have tubers that were actually like chewed off. You could tell where like voles or mice had eaten into the tubers a little bit. Uh, and I wonder if uh, that had something to do with it too. Because especially when the environment gets colder and damp, like in the fall, and then the voles come around and they eat those tubers, uh, that could be an entry point for um, this fungus, uh, this fungal pathogen, uh, to work its way into the plant and to cause problems. And another cause could also be compacted soils, right? Soils that don't drain very well, so it could get uh, in a colder and damper uh, climate or season um, could make the plants more susceptible, especially if the soil is not draining as it should uh, and it's not getting the airflow or water filtration that it needs to maintain a healthy a homeostatic environment. 
So if you are going to rotate crops with the sunchoke, you probably don't want to plant sunflowers or beans or mustards, but you might want to try to grow plants from other plant families that are not going to be as susceptible uh, to the white mold. At least for a certain amount of time, maybe like three years, until that soil structure or soil microbiome can rehabilitate and work itself back into balance. So what are some specific preventative measures we can take so that this white mold doesn't overtake uh, these sunchokes? Well, we talked about crop rotation, right? That can help, maybe rotating it uh, after every two to three years, more or less, maybe de depending on your climate or your soil health and condition. Also, we want to cut down on the canopy density of the plants, right? Because if the sunchokes are grown too close together, too many plants in one small location, uh, they are going to kind of choke each other out, uh, compete for sunlight. We want to make sure that we're uh, thinning out the plants earlier on in the season, uh, and if plants are branching too much, that we are pruning off some of those branches so that we have good light and good airflow in between plants. And then additionally, it's always good to try to maintain or try to improve soil health, right? Uh, make sure that we have plenty of organic matter that's gonna, going to boost the ability for that soil to filter water through and not just hold it in place where it's going to become uh, more anaerobic or more saturated and, and damp and wet. And then also that organic matter boost will also help to increase aeration, right? So we have good air exchange between the soil and the outside air to help create a more stable homeostatic environment in the soil. And then additionally, also we wanna watch out for voles, right? This is just my own observation at this point, but where vole damage may also contribute to uh, increased risk of uh, developing this white mold, right? Giving that pathogen uh, an inroad to infect these plants. So if we are able to curb uh, vole pressure by making the environment and habitat less conducive to their sense of safety, right? If we keep plants or surrounding grass um, cut low, close to the sunchoke patch, right? To some capacity, this may also help to deter voles from the area, right? Especially if we provide habitat for hawks or owls, whether it's perches that are, um, you know, 15 to 20 feet up on uh, woody plants like trees or bushes or nesting locations that these large birds of prey can use. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, now you have a better idea of what to look out for in terms of sunchokes and potential problems so uh, that they can be avoided or minimized and we can still have a productive yield from a garden or a landscape. I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Take care. And that exception is... And that exception is sclerotinia Scler uh, sclerotinia scler and that exception is scler and that exception is sclerotinia sclerotiorum teorum